This video is all about living with a high mileage Tesla and also the costs of owning a Tesla from 60,000 miles to 100. Let's get into it. So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? So here she is, Rusty Tesla. And if you wanna know why I call it Rusty, you'll have to go back and watch the video where we uh, uh, changed the springs, the standard ones to the lowering springs. Uh, bit of a fun video, so check that out. Um, but this is a Tesla Model 3 long range. As you can tell, it's not exactly standard, and I'm not gonna go through the details of what's standard, what's not. This is really simply a video about the costs uh, I've had so far on this car. So this Tesla Model 3 I bought with 57,000 miles two years ago in March and I bought it for 36,000 pounds. Ouch you might think. It was actually the cheapest Tesla Model 3 long range at the time. There was a little bonus because it did have full self-driving which I found out later but in terms of the mileage it's actually done 101,450 about that, we'll check in a second. I've absolutely loved it. I've had all sorts of cars, because uh, I've used to work in the motor trade, so I've had lots of company cars, Audi S3s, Golf Rs, you know, many different Audis and Volkswagens, and truly it is the best car I've owned in terms of specification, amazing sound system, and yes, I've had Bang & Olsen sound system and Audis before, and yeah, it's just a fantastic all-round car. But again, let's focus on the costs. So, in terms of how it stands so far, there are a few things to make it, I would say, uh, a better condition vehicle. I'm gonna start with the most obvious. So, this literally happened in the last couple of days. The number plate light has fallen out. And I thought, I'm not repaired it yet. It looks like the clip has broken. It's not gonna exactly be a difficult fix. I mean, you could argue that's fixed. But that is one thing that's wrong with the car currently. In terms of the bodywork, there's only really one thing that I'd like to point out other than misdemeanors done by myself and that is this car never had um, uh, mud flaps and although I touched it up recently for the EV event, EV festival event which unfortunately never happened you can see that the stones get kicked up here and it's starting to flake the paint so I would recommend if this is something that worries you um, or when you're looking to buy a used car, just check that out. Um, and it's on both sides. It's not really for the back, it's just for the, for the front there. Now, this car has got a bit of flaky paint on the front. Now, I think this front bumper was actually sprayed in the past, and that is why there's been quite a lot of flake in the paint, because there was uh, damage here. There we go, you can see it. So I think it has had actually had repairs or a, some sort of spray in the front. Um, that is what I guess, but you know, it has done a lot of miles. Most of the miles have been motorway miles, truth be told, just sitting at 70 miles an hour. Uh, but I thought I'd just highlight it anyway. There is a dent in the door and go back and watch the video why there's a dent in the door. I basically reversed into it with my stepson's Toyota Yaris. These things happen. Um, in terms of the rest of the bodywork, it's, it's holding up okay. I mean, I can't really, I've never changed the wipers on it um in the 40,000 miles they could probably do with a change now um other than that th there's not really much to say um other than sort of normal wear and tear chips and things like that nothing's falling off it other than the number plate light falling out um but yeah um that's it really uh, just to summarize the modifications just in case people are interested it's got a performance rear spoiler because that's not standard the aero caps just there they're not standard um, it is lowered on eye back springs and it's got wheel spaces and a unplugged front splitter so it's not your cheap um, aliexpress business this is a i think they're about six seven hundred pounds uh, from unplugged performance and they do actually improve um, the uh, aerodynamics very slightly don't think i'll get my 600 quid back um, <laughs> within the time i've got but you never know with the miles that i'm clocking up interior wise i don't think the rear was ever used and there's nothing to report in the back there um again i'm in this car mainly me the kids jump inside it as well 
Um, sorry, it was clean on Sunday, but it gets used. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at the seats. I mean, there was a, uh, a child seat just there, hence the indentation. But I mean, the bolster wear is looking, I mean, it's fine. I mean, you know, when I get into a newer Tesla, I can tell that there is a little bit of wear there, but there's no creases or anything. It looks so much better than the Audi A3s I used to sell, used as a, uh, in the motor trade many years ago. Um, you will notice that this isn't wooden because that was uh, upgraded to white. And just while I remember, if you like content like this about modified EVs and EV conversions, like and subscribe people. It's all about modified EVs, EV conversions. We've got a Tesla con uh, EV converted TVR, so check those videos out and many events that we're at. So I'm gonna start going through uh, some of the costs and I'm gonna turn the car around. But other than that, like, like I said, interior wise, I mean, you know, even there's not really many scratches and it's not like I'm that careful with cars. If anybody knows me, I'm, you know, I just use them. I'm not that much of a, you know, I do clean them, not too regularly other than going to shows and stuff. But I mean, steering wheel wear, I mean, it, it's still good. It's still good, you know? I, honestly, it's it's pretty unbelievable, really, that this has done 101,000 miles. But believe it, because clearly, you know, I don't know, the materials they use is in the Tesla are impressive. People say, oh, the panel gaps and everything else. But look at this car. It's done 101,000 miles, people. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna change the camera angle and I'm gonna read through the costs. So, I've got a sheet of paper here and I've written down all the costs I've accrued so far. And I've actually been pleasantly surprised. Other than one little hiccup where I probably now would have saved a bit of money with the experience of knowing the car and where to go for bringing the cost down. If I start with tyres, so I haven't bought any new tyres for this because if, uh, if people know me, they'll know that I'm quite shrewd with my money. I might blow it on stupid things and lose money in certain areas, but I am shrewd where I can be. When I bought the car used for 57,000 uh, 57, miles, the tyres were really low. And because I bought it from kind of a leasing type company, they actually put four brand new tyres on there. They weren't Michelin, the original tyres, but they were, they were all right, but they were brand new tyres. And I didn't need to change them um, until November 2022. So they didn't actually last that long. And I went on eBay, got eBay got some part warns which were five to six mil brand new tires about eight ish mil 217 pounds for four off eBay and I got them fitted for about 30 quid uh, and then the next time I needed tires was July 2023 and I bought those four tires and they were five to six mil for 180 quid got them fitted for 30 quid happy days I will report the car is getting very close to the uh, wear bars and the tires are in the garage but yeah, I mean, they were 200 quid for four and they're all five mil. So it's going to be the same sort of cost again. In terms of servicing, now, a lot of people will say EVs don't need servicing. And to a certain extent, they are right. They don't need servicing quite as much as uh, petrol diesel cars. They do need checking. And an MOT, I would say, isn't rigorous enough. Um, the first MOT that this vehicle had, it actually failed. It failed on a rear bush. And I took it to a Hevra garage, H-E-V-R-A, that stands for Hybrid and Electric Repair Association. Um, and if you go to Hevra, put the website in, there's another episode where I talk about it. And I had the guy from Hevra on uh, one of the episodes as well. Um, if you put your postcode in, it will show your most local Hevra dealer. So if you're worried about the cost of a main dealer or you've got an older EV and you want some experience on the EV car that where they've got the right um, qualifications, that's where I would go. Um, there's also Cleveland EV that have a mobile service, but I'll come to them, them in a minute. So basically it failed on its first MOT and it was some sort of rear bush and I ended up taking it to Tesla and Tesla ended up charging me £686 38 pence, don't forget about that, um, to replace a rear knuckle assembly. In hindsight, I think it was only really the bush that needed repairing and replacing. But you know what these main dealers are like. Doesn't matter if it's Tesla, Audi or whoever, you know, they will tend to repair more than they need to. 
Um, the good news thing is they did actually replace the rear uh, light on um, on warranty because it was misting up. So it was a little bonus there. And I got free um, a wheel alignment, which was nice. When I come to my next MOT, which was in sort of November um, last year, September last year 2023 I thought you know what I'm gonna get the car checked over so it's first I think it was its first service although I think it had been into Tesla not in my ownership for a couple of bits but nothing major from what I can work out uh, from the history um, and I took it to Cleveland EV or rather Cleveland Cleveland EV came to me again very much a trusted EV specialist and they serviced the car at 84,685 miles and it cost me 200 quid. And they did things that, you know, they checked round the car because I was a bit worried about the MOT again, you know, once bit and twice shy and all that. Um, and they checked round the car and they highlighted certain things and they took leaves out of the radiator area, which is a good thing for from a cooling point of view. Um, that is literally it in Bear in mind, it's done 101,000 miles now, and I bought it 57,000, so that's 44,000 miles. And in total, I have spent £1,343.38. Now, instead of going to Tesla for that rear knuckle assembly, if I'd have taken that to Cleveland EV or Hevra, I think, and I've confirmed this with them, we were talking a couple of hundred pounds. So actually, including tyres, <laughs> including tyres this is, people, not MOTs, because, you know, MOT is like 50 quid. Um, so put another 100 quid for the last couple of years. But that's that would have been like 800 quid, eight 900 quid, which is it's peanuts. I really haven't had any issues. In terms of battery degradation, if you want to see uh, what happened when I did the test on Rusty, which is the name of the Tesla, uh, at 93,000 miles, go back and watch that episode. I'm sure, because I've done two tests, the Tesla test and another test, just to compare uh, but i'm sure i will end up doing another test sometime soon so very very cheap motoring i suppose i better talk about range for a minute because i know everyone always goes on about range and something that's probably going to be relevant with my car with its 88 percent of its battery left through degradation uh, because degradation does happen with electric cars, some more than others. Um, so with a full battery, the car will say 270, no, 283 miles. But more importantly, because to save the battery and not to make the degradation any worse, you should really only charge to 80%. And at 80%, it has 220 miles, which... Bearing in mind, I mean, I do a 90 mile round trip and 90 miles, 220, you know, I still got plenty left. So people that think that, you know, all, you know, the older batteries you've got to worry about, you know, charging them to 80%, have you got enough range? You certainly can in the Tesla Model 3 long range. Plus it's four wheel drive. It's, it's the best all rounder. What can I say? I think it's the best car out there for the money. In terms of what's wrong with the car, so, the rear number plate light, which I showed you, I mean, that's not going to be difficult to fix. Um, I've shown you the paint flaking on the front bumper, which, like I said, I think the front bumper's been sprayed at some point. So I don't think that's a, you know, a wear and tear thing as much, but it's going to have a load of stone chips. It's done a lot of miles. It's on the motorway a lot. So there is one thing that is apparently it's, it's not a common fault, but uh, when I've spoken to people about it before, it's something to maybe look out for if you are buying a used Tesla, is my driver's seat has a little bit of play. Now, if I accelerate hard, it does, it feels like it just, it just moves very, very slightly. I've checked all the uh, connections of the seat to the vehicle and they're all tight, they're all fine. It's just a slight play in the driver's seat. Now, I was going to replace it. I, I had someone I was going to buy a full interior for £200, but Unfortunately, it was gone before I could get there. But a driver's seat on a Tesla isn't going to be too expensive. And it's all it's not really that much of an issue. Um, it's just a little bit annoying. That's all, really. Um, one thing to mention, which is something that I replaced and upgraded. And I was told by a Cleveland EV mobile uh, engineer who did the service on the car. where it, it was likely to have gone by this kind of mileage. 
So just to be, you know, hands up and be completely fair in this test, because, you know, I want to make sure I'm giving people the right advice, is I replaced my lower control arm bushes, which are bushes at the bottom of the front suspension, essentially, with spherical bearings, which are basically upgraded uh, bushes to make the car handle better. They're from Mountain Pass Performance. They cost me about 300 and 40 pounds from America so they weren't they weren't cheap bits of kit and my friend helped me fit them so what I thought I'd do is I'd share the cost of standard ones and I put it into the internet I couldn't find the Tesla ones but uh, I looked on the internet and they start from about 80 pounds so the argument would be to fit them probably talking about an hour maybe an hour or two so 200 quid 300 quid fitted so just another cost to be aware of, um, because bearing in mind, you know, the higher mileage Teslas, you know, they're going to use these suspension parts like any car. It doesn't matter if it's petrol, diesel, electric, they use these suspension parts. Some people might argue that, you know, electric cars are heavier, so they use the suspension parts and tires more. I've not really found that. What people uh, don't f uh, forget um, is I use a lot of regenerative braking, so it probably saves the tires a lot more. It certainly saves the brakes because uh, EVs, they only use about a third the amount of uh, brake. They have about a third the amount of brake wear compared to ICE and diesel cars because the motors brake uh, for you, essentially right to a stop. So anyone that's got an EV uh, that has one pedal driving, you know that the regenerative braking is nice and strong, so it will save you money on the braking. And it's so easy to use. I mean, a good example of an electric car that doesn't have uh, one pedal driving is the Porsche Taycan, which I was really surprised at. Although Porsche say, officially, that it's because it's a driver's car and you want to be able to brake. Do you? <laughs> I was, I'm actually fine, you know, driving this. And I love the one pedal brake. It's nice and easy to drive, which is, you know, when you're doing a lot of miles, it's important. And if you're not a car person, you know, it might be more important to them. So... That's it really. Um, like I said, I've got the tires to replace the current ones because they're getting low. Um, and so it'll cost me total 230 quid fitted. Um, I've got the rear number plate light to sort um, and this seat to sort out. And something that um, I had a, a live show because uh, I have a live every Thursday, at eight o'clock, uh, talking about EV conversions, modified EVs and people in the EV industry. Essentially it's, you know, EV, info for petrol heads i had matt cleveley on and he suggested that now my car's a hundred thousand miles that it might be worth changing the oil on the drive unit so the drive unit is the motor and gearbox combined and there is oil in that so i'm going to do a little bit more research into that because i don't necessarily want to spend money where it's not needed uh, but i do want to run this car into the ground i've taken a big depreciation hit Anyone that's watching this now that hasn't got an electric car, you can really take advantage of the EV, you know, especially Teslas, because they're the most convenient electric car you can buy in terms of charging, efficiency, technology, and all of that. But any EV, you know, it's a really good value. Be aware of the ins and outs of some of the cars, like battery degradation on the Nissan Leafs and charger issues on the Renault Zoe's, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, look at Hyundai Ionic, that's a good starting point. But Teslas are getting so such good value now, I would say it's a really good place to start. So, yes, those are those things that I need to think about uh, moving forward. But like I said, I'm going to be running this car into the ground. Um, I just want to, you know, I'm really interested to see how far Rusty will go. If anyone's got any questions about my experience so far in the Tesla Model 3, then please, you know, put it in the comments. Um, really interested to know if people have got any questions because I'm really happy to help. I understand that not everyone can afford an EV. So if you want to look at my last video about a cheap diesel auto versus an electric car, check that out as well. Because all I'm trying to do is help people into electric uh, if it's possible for them. It's not possible for everyone, but in most cases it is, and it can save you money. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you want to see any of the other videos, there's loads on the YouTube channel. Uh, check them out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.